Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucian's urge to take the necessary precautions as Tropical Storm Gonzalo approaches. Government extends deadline for applications for the income support program. And staff of the St. Lucia Marketing Board undergo food safety training. Tropical Storm Gonzalo formed over the tropical Atlantic Ocean at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. The storm is located about 1,250 miles east of the Windward Islands. The maximum sustained winds are near 45 miles per hour. Gonzalo is moving west-northwest at 12 miles per hour and at this rate is forecasted to pass south of St. Lucia by Saturday, 25th July, 2020. Residents of St. Lucia, especially those in the south of the island, are being urged by the St. Lucia Met Services to monitor the progress of the storm and take all the necessary precautions for possible impact. The government of St. Lucia has extended the deadline for applications for the income support program for non-NIC contributors to July 30, 2020. The decision to extend the deadline is to ensure that no one is left behind and to grant more time to those who have started and not completed the application process. This relief program is for persons who were not contributing to NIC and made a living as sole traders and self-employed. Over 1,000 persons have been paid and payments will continue to be made. The Income Support Program is a safety net for anyone who has lost their opportunity to work due to the COVID-19 pandemic, which includes individuals or entities who generated income as offshoot service providers of the tourism industry, including taxi drivers, vendors, farmers, hairdressers and small bar and restaurant owners. Artists and entertainers and those who work in the creative industries are eligible and are invited to apply. A full eligibility list can be accessed via the Government of St. Lucia's website. Applicants must electronically complete and submit the relevant application form, which is accessible on the Government of St. Lucia website www.govt.lc. The Income Support Program forms part of the Social Stabilization Plan announced by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney as part of the national response to the COVID-19 pandemic. The government of St. Lucia this fiscal year will be paying special attention to culture and creative industries. One such measure to be undertaken in that vein is the review of the national cultural policy. Jesse Leos tells us more. In this fiscal year, the government of St. Lucia is taking a strategic approach in its support of the arts and creative sectors and culture with a review of the national cultural policy. We believe that given the dynamics of the environment where we are now as a nation, um, the infusion of that digital economy, you know, there are so many areas for us. And even as a government, um, what we want to do with respect to our Cultural Development Foundation, which is one of the key agencies um, to drive the development of our culture, the kind of work that we want to do with these insti this institution, um, we would need to have that broad consultation and dialogue with the public to ensure that everybody understands clearly what it is that we want to do. Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, assures that public consultations will soon commence pending the development of the policy's terms of reference. The idea of cultural policy was developed at UNESCO in the 1960s. St. Lucia's original cultural policy was created in the early 2000s, making it nearly two decades old. The objective of cultural policies are generally to improve the accessibility of arts and creative activities to citizens and support these artistic and cultural expressions through the emerging industries. A revised cultural policy for St. Lucia is also hoped to transform cultural norms. Issues of the dependency syndrome, you know, where people expect in the society um, others to really be doing things for them as opposed to them doing for themselves. We need to look deep within ourselves and see how best as a society we can assist in transforming that behavior from being so reliant on gouvernement for everything, you understand, to people understanding that they have a responsibility for themselves. Over the years, we've had the policy, but what have we really done to be able to shape the mindsets to ensure that people, you understand, become independent citizens 
and being able to contribute freely you know, to the society um, and not looking for those extrinsic rewards, but valuing the intrinsic rewards that they receive from being part of a community. And speaking of changing mindsets, more individuals who work in the creative and cultural sectors have become convinced of an NIC subscription since the coronavirus impact. The government just extended applications for its Income Support Program, ISP, to July 30th for individuals who work in informal sectors, including the creative industries. Senator Belrose informed that artists who were hard hit by the effects of the coronavirus are taking advantage of the ISP facility and now taking heed to make NIC payments. Mm -hmm. I think what we want as a government is to ensure that everybody is within that one system, um, with the national insurance system, and hence the reason for us driving home the point that people must register yeah, for the income support. But part of that is to ensure that they are in the mainstream, they come into the fore with respect to being a part of the National Insurance Corporation. Mm -hmm. um, that is the one pension plan that we have for our country. That is what we all should subscribe to. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, we know that with the artists, they work, um, some of them find work sporadically, intermittently, you know, it's not consistent. Mm -hmm. But what we want to do is to encourage them, no matter how small it is, to put something aside for wet days. Reporting for the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, in collaboration with the Taiwan Technical Mission and ECA, has commenced a food safety training for staff of the newly remodeled Park House at the St. Lucia Marketing Board. The initiative falls under the enhancement of the efficiency of production, distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetable sector project. Anisia Antoine has the details. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives hosted the opening ceremony for the training of food safety for staff of the newly remodeled Parkhouse at the Marketing Board. The Parkhouse is a facility where fruit is received and processed prior to distribution to the market. The initiative forms part of a collaborative effort with the Taiwan Technical Mission and the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, ICA, and falls under the enhancement of the efficiency of production distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetable sector project with the overall aim of reducing the food import bill. Greg Rollins, representative of ICA, stressed on the importance of the training in ensuring that international food and safety standards are met at the Parkhouse. We are pleased to collaborate on this project. We recognize its relevance given the current situation um, because of the COVID-19 situation. We don't only have to ensure that we handle produce in a way that does not cause the spread of any virus, but also due to COVID, we know that a number of our farmers would have been affected through the displacement of or disruption of their markets for their produce, particularly in the hotel industry. And therefore, we need to find alternative markets for these farmers so that they can continue to earn their livelihoods. And we need to have facilities that allow for those products that they produce to be handled and to meet the consumer so we have safe and wholesome food available. Head of the Taiwan Technical Mission, Mario Cheng, expressed contentment with the progress of the project and encouraged staff and farmers to take advantage of the opportunities under the enhancement of the efficiency of production distribution supply chains in the fruits and vegetable sector project. I'm very happy we can implementation this project also provide a human capacity for farmer and introduce the facilities to improve the package this technology. So today we came over here for feed the full safety, for feed the half up. Actually we are not just packing the fruit and vegetable, we are packing the farmer's dream and the farmer's profit. So I like to encourage each of the farmer and each of the HACCP training participants. Today we are in the right direction and we will move forward to let them become better and better. 
Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Barry Felicier, explained that the staff will be undergoing the Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points training and International Standard for Food Safety. The Permanent Secretary also expressed gratitude to the Taiwan Technical Mission for their contribution towards the remodeling of the Park House. The first phase of the Park House is complete. And you would have seen, if you have worked for the Park House, you would have seen that the IRDC has been rehabilitated to include the components of showers, washrooms, lockers, kitchen, office, the reception area, storage area, and packaging area. But still, the facility is incomplete, and major items still to be completed include the testing laboratory, the installation of conveyor equipment, and of course, additional sinks. Nonetheless, the Park House has already served St. Lucia with the distribution of the now famous National Food Packages or program. And today you uh, can make or be part of history. This is a historic event as we have the opportunity to be pioneers in the operations of a Park House. The Hazard Analysis Critical Control Points training will be held every Monday for a duration of six weeks. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Prime Minister's ball this year provided support to some 17 charities, amounting to almost $300,000. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney commended the charities for their hard work and dedication. The checks were presented to the charities in a special ceremony held on Monday, 20 of July, 2020. The Prime Minister's ball 2020 was threefold. The event, which formed part of St. Lucia's 41st year of independence, served as a platform to recognize outgoing diplomats, introduce St. Lucia's goodwill ambassadors, and most importantly, raise funds for the various humanitarian organizations in St. Lucia. At a special ceremony, checks were presented to 17 humanitarian organizations, amounting to almost $300,000. Chairperson of the Independence Committee, Honorable Janine Girodi McIntyre, expressed gratitude to all the benefiting entities for their hard work and dedication to making St. Lucia a better place. The Boys Training Center received $50,000. Um, I'll tell you a little about the Boys Training Center. The Boys Training Center is a juvenile rehabilitation center. And in February last um, this year, we celebrated 60 years of existence. Um, we cater to two categories of boys, boys that are in need of care and protection, and juveniles that are in conflict with the law. Um, recently, 2018, the Juvenile Justice Act was um, passed, and um, the age of a child moved from 16 to 18 years old. So now we have boys we wouldn't necessarily have come into the center coming to us right now. Um, over the past three years, we have embarked on a program to ensure that the boys who come to us not only receive the counseling that they need, but a holistic um, um, program. The St. Lucia National Youth Council received $25,000. We have been working tirelessly to develop a space, a safe space for young people in the heart of Castries, where young people could access services such as library, computer services, counseling, and opportunities for them to contribute through volunteerism. But more importantly, one where they could feel like they're part of a family. Our efforts remain steady and incremental at best, but we have not been able to fully conceptualize this idea, or fully realize this idea rather. So upon assuming office in 2019, my team and I vowed that before our tenure was completed, that we would work to create that safe space where young people could, in St. Lucia could feel that they are welcomed and where the Secretariat of the National Youth Council could be housed. We met with Honorable Alan Chastney back in August of 2019, and this was one of the things discussed. And he gave his commitment during that meeting that he would do his utmost best to ensure that this became a reality. This generous donation received today will go directly towards the upgrading and the creation of that safe space. So on behalf of the St. Lucia National Youth Council, I would like to thank you, Honorable Chastney, for sticking to your commitment to assist us in the creation of that safe space. 
Helen's daughters received $15,000. And um, if you walk into that market right now, 90% of the vendors are female. But for some reason, there's this er erroneous tendency to believe that our vendors are not our growers, when a lot of times they are doing the dual role of both growing and selling their produce. And honestly, this donation, thank you to the Prime Minister and, his, and to his wife, Mrs. Dubley Chasne, it's really telling us that finally, on a national level, we are seeing, we are hearing, and we are understanding the importance of an investment in female farmers. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Helen's daughter, and voicing as a female farmer as myself, I would like to thank the Prime Minister of St. Lucia for <laughs> sorry, the Prime Minister of St. Lucia for, for believing and investing in us, as I believe that female farmers are the one covering the food insecurity in St. Lucia. Thank you. The Viewford Comprehensive Secondary School received $25,000. We graciously accept this donation on behalf of every student and staff member of Uford Comprehensive Secondary School, particularly the science team whose vision it is to see that every child reaps the benefit of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics education. This desire holds greater currency in the post-COVID era where traditional careers are fast giving way to new and emerging ones highly dependent on STEM skill sets. The urgency, therefore, to help us find practical solutions to today's problems while anticipating future challenges is even more critical. Your support, no doubt, will translate to much greater opportunities for us as the students outside the traditional realm of education. And thanks to you, we will be more globally competitive and ready to integrate into and positively shape the markets that are both current and emerging. So as the president of our science club and as a student of science myself and on behalf of our school, we thank you, Mrs. Dubule Chastney, Mr. Chastney, and everybody who has patronized this movement so that we could have been impacted and we could really go forward with STEM education at our school. The check presentation was held on Monday, 20th of July, 2020. This is Entia Knightley. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the Entia Nouvelle of We All. In an effort to ensure patient and first responder safety, the St. Lucia Fire Service has reviewed its patient transfer procedures, especially for patients with respiratory distress. Face masks will be provided. At no time during transportation should the face mask be removed. Please be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle au Creole. Monsieur Tangenel, Monsieur, Madame, Department, Kenny Responsabilité, pour information à gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS, et Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, qu'à poser tout nouvelle à Creole. Présenter au Primus Hutchinson. Le même Parlement, t'es semblé en cas de consulte mardi, pour te chercher permission pour autoriser le ministre des Finances pour prêter plusieurs millions de dollars pour financer le projet qui est nécessaire à cette ci Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney a trouvé autorisation pour le ministre des Finances de prêter 10, 000, 10 millions 700 000 dollars américains à la Banque de développement caribéen, ça c'est CDB, pour financer diverses dettes commencées le 1er octobre l'année ici pour le bout le 30 septembre 2021. Selon le Premier ministre Chasney, l'agence là c'est pour principalement financer diverses nécessités santé en bas maladie de corona et pour essayer de ressusciter la situation économique et la affaire sociale pays là. Le Premier ministre a expliqué que l'argent pour être ça là, pas qu'il y ait une façon d'affecter le fonds pays là. Et que CDB a un garantissement pour supporter cette ci et l'autre pays caribé là, il y a un temps qui est difficile pour eux. Le Premier ministre Chasney a aussi trouvé autorisation 
pour le ministère des Finances pour être 45 millions de dollars américains pour l'Association pour le développement international pour financer le projet de transportation avion. C'est le premier ministre. L'argent pour être ça là, c'est pour dépenser à ce aéroport pour abattre des désastres naturels, Congo de l'eau, Golapli, et généralement pour développer la résilience contre des désastres naturels qui peuvent affecter l'opération à ce aéroport ça là. L'ONU ça là aussi qui a aidé pour improuver la meilleure protection et la résilience des navigations à ce aéroport cette ci Il y a 20 millions d'associations pour le développement international pour un projet de transformation digitale Caribla. Parmi les ministres qui présentaient le papier, c'était Honorable Premier ministre et ministre des Finances, ministre des Affaires touristiques, ministre des Affaires travaux et bâtiments, ministre de l'Éducation et ministre des Affaires commerce et industrie et le consommateur. Si vous êtes permanent au ministère des Affaires justice sociale et égalité, Mme Velde Joseph, de voyons une discussion à ce NTN, expliquer le programme service social qui le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney de a adressé durant la présentation budget 2020 pour 21. Selon Mme Joseph, un parmi les citoyens qui a reçu l'assistance de plus, c'est eux qui ont reçu l'assistance de plus avant ces enfants qui déshabillent. Les gens qui déshabillent, les mamans qui déshabillent, um, comme la pitine, nous avons 200 dollars par mois. So, à présent, nous avons 300 dollars par mois. Et ça, c'est pour trois mois. Um, et comme dit, nous avons commencé en mois de juillet. Nous avons des mamans qui ont des gens qui ont des gens. Nous avons des mamans qui ont Children in Foster Care. Et puis ces mamans là, nous te kabay mouna ki ka gade a botiwa, nous te kabay 300 dollars, nous kabay 400 dollars encore pour 3 mois, um, kouma se mois sa la. Nous ni um, moun ki ka vive pi HIV, yo te ka jwen voucher pou a gade pou manje kote masi. Voucher sa a tene a vale a 100 dollars, et puis a brise nous kabay 200 dollars. Et ça y a assistance là, c'est pour 6 mois, commencé en mois de juillet. Nous avons un plus gros projet que nous avons gardé pour mettre plus de monde à l'assistance uh, publique. Le projet ça là, nous avons un ministère, uh, nous avons créé la public assistance, à des gens qui ont des listes les pauvres, c'est même chose. Um, nous avons 2600 personnes à ce liste là. Nous avons mis. 1000 plus de monde à ce so nous avons 3600 personnes pour nous finir le projet. Le secrétaire permanent Joseph a aussi annoncé des gros assistants qui département, ça c'est le département où il y a des gros agences internationales pour faciliter le programme. Nous avons UNICEF, nous avons le World Food Programme, nous avons le uh, UNDP qui a venu pour nous, qui a donné nos assistants aussi. Nous ni UN India Fund, nous hen takla han sort fund sala, la ni um, ILO et la ni UN Women uh, ki ka supporte se poje ministry. Nous bien content dat ki nous sa um, uh, bay moun assiste sala ka commencé à moi juillet et nous just vle di moun, nous vle bay yo asi was la dat ministry ka kopon situation et puis nous ka e continue travail pour uh, by mon soulagement à de à de tout ça nous qu'à vivre là. Gouvernement cette fois-ci qu'à continuer pour établir flexibilité en façon de qu'à procurer assistance pour les citoyens pays qui trouvaient affectés sérieusement à la maladie corona. Pour ce cela, j'ai déjà ajouté à ce temps pour mon qui pas qu'à faire contribution pour NIC pour qu'ils fait application pour trouver assistance si pour programme pour supporter eux. Ça c'est eux qui pas qu'à travail. Le gouvernement a allongé le temps pour le 3 juillet 2020. La décision que le gouvernement fait pour ajouter à ce temps là, c'est parce qu'il plan, c'est pour ne pas quitter personne de, et pour faire possible pour ceux qui ont commencé, mais pour qu'on finit complètement l'application. Le programme là, c'est pour les gens qui ont fait contribution pour NIC et qui ont travaillé à ce côté de la Plus que 1 000 à ces individus, ils ont trouvé le paiement et ce paiement là a continué. Le programme là, c'est un secours proche pour ceux qui ont l'occasion et l'opportunité pour travailler en résultat de maladie corona. Par exemple, chauffeur taxi, 
les vivandaises, les femmes et les cultivateurs, chefs les restaurants, les artistes, avant même plusieurs autres. Les applicants, ça fait application à sous ces formes-là qui avaient là. Le programme-là, c'est Yon qui, le Premier ministre Alain Chasney, qui a annoncé un effort pour soulager le pays en bas maladie Corona. Et c'est comme ça, nous retrouvons votre nouvelle là. Je vous remercie pour votre temps pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour invitation. Pour que je ne puisse pas encore suivre comment se fait la vie, les gens peuvent se trouver dans votre nouvelle en créole. Après ça, je vous remercie pour votre chaîne. Merci à Pill Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.